My name is Nicole. I am 30 years old and have been married for five years now. I met my husband Oscar at my old job. When we got married, I quit and began working part time. Oscar is a very calm person. I have never seen him get mad, not even once. At work, he would never get angry or blame his colleagues, even if they made mistakes. He would instead level headedly teach them how to do better. To make it clear, I was the colleague who would make mistakes. There was one time that I was sure I was going to get fired. If Oscar wasn't there, I probably would have been. I totally fell for him. A fond memory of ours as a couple is when he suddenly confessed to me in front of all our colleagues when we went out to drink together. That's a lie. That's part of our dark history. When I remember that moment, I want to curl up in a ball from embarrassment. But anyway, we have a great relationship. We don't have kids yet, but we're working at it. Since I'm in my 30s, I've been going to fertility checkups to make sure everything is okay. We live a very happy and calm married life. But of course, life can't always be that smooth sailing. Life has its ups and downs. One example of that is my adversary. Huh? Christmas? The holiday season was just around the corner. Every New Year's, Oscar and I pop a bottle of champagne and look back on the year, reflecting on all we've been through. End of the year cleaning? No, no. We keep our apartment pretty tidy usually, and it's not all that big, so there isn't really a need for that kind of major cleaning. I know some people like to greet the new year in a clean house, and I'm sure it feels refreshing. But doing all that in the winter cold? Oscar is on the same page as me about that, so it's fine, don't you think? I was thinking about what we should eat along with our champagne. The fish we got last year was quite bony and a pain to eat, so this year. When suddenly Oscar brought it up. Oh, yeah. They said we should go over for two days. Happy, happy holidays. Unhappy, unhappy visit to Oscar's parents' house. I shouldn't say that. They may be unimportant to me, but those are Oscar's treasured parents. I am grateful to them for raising the husband I love so much. They live a one hour drive away. Since it's not that close, we don't go back and forth often. But we still have to properly visit them at least once a year. Thanksgiving, we spend with my family. Oscar's family wants us to go over to their house for Thanksgiving as well, but Oscar was firm. If we go to between both families for every holiday, we won't have any time to relax during our time off work. So Oscar clearly said Thanksgiving, we would spend with my family, and Christmas with his. My parents and Oscar's father accepted that. But there was one person who wouldn't accept that no matter what. She is the adversary I mentioned earlier. My mother-in-law. A wife's most hated person. There are some wives who get along with their mother-in-laws, but unfortunately that was not possible with mine. Just as I was feeling the holiday high, my mood immediately sunk. Two days. Can't we go in the morning and return in the evening? They said we should sleep over on Christmas Eve like usual. Again? My little brother got married, right? It'll be the first Christmas with him and his wife over, so my parents wanted us to have time to all relax together. But it's always been like that, even before he got married. By the way, who said all that? My mom. Well, obviously. Oscar's father would always say that we should do as we wanted. Pushing our plans to the side for her own sake was my mother-in-law's special skill. But it's true, this will be the first Christmas since my brother-in-law Anthony got married. I want to talk to his wife, so even if I'm not a fan of this plan, I should go along with it. So, what should we do? Fine, let's spend the night. My mother-in-law loved harassing me. It seemed to energize her. When dealing with her, I've thought to myself on multiple occasions that it feels like I'm living in a soap opera. 
After Oscar and I got married and moved in together, we invited his parents over for a mini housewarming party. I planned on ordering delivery to get everyone in the party mood, but my mother-in-law told me I had to cook something myself. Oscar and his father said that ordering from a restaurant was fine, but having just gotten married, I didn't want to pick any fights with Oscar's mother from so early on. I'm not the best at cooking, but I did my best for the occasion. Oscar and his father complimented my cooking, but my mother-in-law made comments like, How did you manage to only cook things I don't like? What's with the seasoning on this? Did you drop the salt shaker into the pot? Putting this much salt in the food, are you trying to kill us? This is the issue with young people these days. They don't even know how to cook properly. I feel bad for Oscar, who will have to eat this every day. She complained like this the entire time, but she ate absolutely everything I served her. She was already like that from the beginning, and every time I met her from then on, was another barrage of nitpicking and hate. At first, her words genuinely hurt me, but now I've become skilled at ignoring her. But Anthony's wife isn't like that. I think her name was Renee. She's still a beginner at dealing with her, our mother-in-law from hell. They just got married recently, so I'm sure she hasn't had to deal with our mother-in-law yet. I'm worried about her. Anthony and Renee lived only a 10-minute walk or 4-minute bike ride from his parents, Imagining my mother-in-law intensely pedaling her bike and then entering Anthony and Renee's house without prior notice sent a shiver down my spine. It's possible. With my mother-in-law, it's totally possible. I hope I never have to deal with that myself. But I should stop with these negative thoughts. Anyway, since Renee probably isn't used to our mother-in-law yet, I need to protect her. My heart quietly burned with this mission. On Christmas Day... Welcome. Oh, you're here. Yep, there it is. Spy for the moment she sees me. As usual. I kept my feelings inside and just smiled back. I've come to learn that's the best way to deal with her spite. Won't there ever come a day when I can stop dealing with it completely? I wish. But for now, my smile just seemed to anger her more. I sighed internally and we headed to the living room. Anthony and his wife had already arrived, and they were in the living room with Anthony and Oscar's father. And then it began. The holidays are getting happier and happier as our family grows, said my father-in-law. Yeah, though we're hoping that some little ones will join our family next year. We plan to spend some time enjoying our life as newlyweds without kids. You'll eventually regret that. When you finally try to have kids, you may find out your wife is infertile, like Nicole. I've been tested, and I'm not infertile. Our failed attempts so far have just been a lack of luck. Nicole is completely healthy and not infertile at all. Oscar angrily spoke up. We can't be so sure about that. She probably photoshopped the test report. Who does she think I am? And how much free time does she think I have? Of course, her words hurt. I would have never let you marry her if I had known she was infertile. You still have time to find someone new. I was hurt, but my mother-in-law only continued. I became more and more gloomy. My father-in-law butt in. You're being rude. Our sons and their wives have all come together like this for the first time. You shouldn't cause a scene like this on Renee's first Christmas with us. He tried to lighten the mood, but... What are you saying? I want to make things clear precisely because it's the first time. Young people these days really don't respect their elders. We have much more life experience than them, so they should do as we say. We have to be strict on them. I shouldn't do this. They should all be grateful for what I'm going. My mother-in-law contested. My father-in-law's attempt to lighten the mood failed. And Nicole, Renee, what are you sitting around for? A wife's first job is to prepare refreshments for everyone. You married into our family, you aren't regular guests. Once you prepare refreshments, you need to clean the house, do the laundry, and then prepare dinner. There's a lot to do, 
Don't just sit around, get moving. There it was, the mother-in-law combo attack. All of us had barely just arrived, and my mother-in-law was already trying to boss us around. Oscar, Anthony, and their father tried to stop her, but because they were all soft-spoken, she overpowered them. My mother-in-law wouldn't stop. And clean the bathroom. Of course, tonight you two will shower last, after me. And there it is. Every Christmas I've spent here, I've dealt with that. We have an order in which we have to take showers, starting with my father-in-law, the man of the house. That's a totally old-fashioned way of thinking, but what can you do? The order went, my father-in-law first, then Oscar, Anthony, my mother-in-law, and finally me. I'm sure that now Renee will come after me. Well, it didn't make much of a difference who came first between Renee and I. The problem was my mother-in-law. I would wait for my turn patiently, but she just wouldn't take a shower. Waiting, waiting, and waiting, she would take a shower at the last minute and then my turn would come. But they live in an old house with a boiler that can only warm up a certain amount of water per use, and my mother-in-law was adamant that the boiler should only be turned on once per day. Once it reached my turn, there was little hot water left, and whatever was left had already begun cooling down, and it was the middle of the winter. I once tried secretly turning the boiler on when it was my turn for a shower, but my mother-in-law stuck her head into the bathroom and shut it off. Because of this, I catch a cold every time we go over for Christmas. I end up spending the rest of the year doing my best to recuperate. Oscar and his father spoke up against that countless times, but she never stopped. Ah, so it's going to be the same this year, huh? Just as I was thinking I was sick and tired of this. Wow! A voice exclaimed. Turning around, I saw it was Anthony's wife, who had been silent until now. Her sparkling eyes were wide open. Wow! Is this for real? Amazing, it's just like in that soap opera. She lifted her hand to her mouth, which had dropped open in surprise. This was also sudden that everyone went, Huh? This is my first time seeing someone like this. So this is what people call a monster-in-law, huh? I thought this was just in dramas and movies. But it's more frustrating, anger-inducing, and annoying in real life. It makes me want to slap you. You really are amazing. No, you're the amazing one for being able to say something like that so nonchalantly. That's what I thought inside, but I kept silent. Everyone else stayed quiet as well. The first person who spoke up was, Who do you think you are? Our mother-in-law. What's with that attitude and those words? Is that something you can say to a mother? Saying you want to slap me? Huh? Come on. Come on? I'm teaching you what it means to be a wife, calling me a monster and saying I'm annoying? I'm teaching you basic social know-how. You should be grateful. Our mother-in-law screamed her face bright red. Renee then laughed slightly. Her mother-in-law was so surprised she seemed to not know what was going on. Basic social know-how? What era are you living in? Are you living in the 21st century? Preparing refreshments, doing the laundry, and then cleaning? This is your house, not ours. The kitchen is woman's battleground. I was taught by parents to not enter another woman's kitchen without permission. You aren't just another woman. You married into our family. I didn't marry you. I married Anthony. What? Wow, I'm really impressed. To think that mother-in-law like you exist in real life and not just in soap operas. Don't you think what you're doing is strange? You should reflect on yourself for a minute because your actions are disgusting. Saying such shocking things so calmly, Renee had our mother-in-law at a loss for words. Her anger was so intense, she probably couldn't express it in words. Seeing her trembling from anger, I struggled to hold back my laughter. <laughs> After I was unable to control myself and let out a laugh, the men joined in as well. We all burst out in laughter. Once we began, we couldn't stop. Holding our bellies, we laughed and laughed until tears came from our eyes. What's so funny? Seeing my mother-in-law's red face, I became even less able to control my laughter. 
Please stop, you're going to kill me. My cheeks hurt. Anthony, Oscar, my father-in-law and I continued to laugh. My mother-in-law was trembling, face bright red. The look on Renee's face showed she didn't know what was going on. Eventually, the chaos finally died down and the sun started setting outside. I was tired out from laughing so much, but more than that, I was hungry. Oscar's mother was still telling Renee and I to cook dinner, but the strength in her voice had significantly decreased. But she was still persistent. Of course, Renee protested this. Are you harassing us again? You're harassing us again, aren't you? Calling us over to your house and then forcing us to cook? You're trying to take advantage of us, aren't you? Our mother-in-law went quiet. We decided to order delivery and Renee and I helped out with serving the meal. But of course, only to a degree. We helped set the table and clean up as well as do the dishes. That level of support was more than enough. Though our mother-in-law still was telling us to clean the house and do the laundry after we finished eating. She really was stubborn. Whenever she got tired of listening to our mother-in-law, Renee would snap back, making our mother-in-law go silent. It was my first time seeing her so quiet. I thought there was no end to her complaints. Of course, we didn't sleep over. When our mother-in-law mumbled complaints about this, Renee said, Oh, you're still going on. Why don't you try watching a soap opera? I can find an old-fashioned wife and mother-in-law drama for you online. How about doing that once we leave tonight? I'm sure you'll enjoy it since you'll see many people exactly like you. Our mother-in-law went silent again. At first, I thought Renee might have just let her first comments slip out on accident in the spur of the moment, but she seemed to really believe everything she said. Renee, you're really tough, I said, to which she smiled. No, that's not true. I'm just young and impatient. If anything, I think you're the tough one for dealing with her bullying until now. There's no way you could deal with all that if you didn't really love Oscar. I have a lot to learn from you. Hearing those words, my heart felt lighter. I wanted to protect her, but she instead ended up protecting me. I was deeply grateful that she became my sister-in-law. I have a lot to learn from her as well. I want to become a stronger person. Above all, she taught me that I shouldn't be scared to talk back to my mother-in-law. She has all my gratitude. A few months after Christmas, when the flowers began blooming and the weather got warmer, I was pregnant. Oscar and I cried tears of joy. When we went to Oscar's parents' house to tell them the news, Pregnant? Oh, hmm. it's a boy, right? If you don't give birth to a proper heir for Oscar, I'll never forgive you. The family isn't rich enough to require an heir, is it? If you talk like that, I won't let you meet your grandchild, you know. After clapping back like Renee would, Oscar's mother went silent. Oscar and I made eye contact and smiled at each other. I'm going to become a mother soon. I can't let my mother-in-law control me forever. In the future, when our child brings home the person they want to marry, there's no way I'll act like her. I'm grateful to both Renee and the baby in my belly for pushing me to become a stronger person. Stroking my belly softly, I looked outside the window. My eyes twinkled as I watched the wind blow flower petals into the air.